remembering and revisiting forgotten recipes, you are watching episode 2 of Lost Recipes of US, an original series by Honest Cooks. Today's Lost Recipe is a crispy and crunchy corn appetizer, which is inspired by a whimsically named book, What Mrs. Fisher Knows About Old Southern Cooking, published in 1881. However, we were surprised to find some even older documentations of corn oysters, most notably in the Hammond Harwood House cookbook from 1819. Some of the early renditions of the recipe we are making today used green corn, which would resemble the taste of oysters. That's why some of these recipes are also called mock oysters, corn oysters or summer oysters. To enhance the flavor of our corn oysters today, we will pair them with a lip-smacking chili sauce. This sauce takes the appetizer to a whole other level. If you want to access our written recipe, visit our website honestcookskitchen.com. And now, let's get started. We'll start with the chili sauce because that needs some simmering time, anywhere between 45 to 60 minutes. This sauce is essentially a vegetable relish and can also be made by following standard canning procedures. But if time is of essence, you can follow my recipe where we first cook the sauce in a sauce pot, then freeze any excess sauce. If you don't freeze it, it will last in the fridge for about three weeks. Refer to the blog on my website for more on freezing, canning and storage times. As for the prep right now, roughly chop the vegetables and then add them to a food processor. The vegetables that I will be using for my sauce are one red bell pepper, half a red onion, two tomatoes with the seeds removed, three to four stalks of celery, and I like to get rid of the fibers, but that's totally optional. Depending on your heat preference, you can adjust the number of thigh chilies. I'm using two bird's eye chilies and about five or six cloves of garlic. Everything goes into the food processor, which we will buzz for no more than 20 seconds. I'm not trying to make a smoothie, just a chunky mixture. From here, it's directly into a heated pan. I recommend using a wider pan because wider surface area means faster cooking, but you can also totally use a sauce pot instead. To the vegetables, I'm adding one cup of water, three fourths cup of white vinegar, sugar, salt, cinnamon sticks, mustard seeds, cloves and black pepper, and red chili flakes. If you're not a fan of whole spices in your food, you can either use a cheesecloth Tie the whole spices in it and then fish it out in the end, or you can also use powdered spices. Cover and cook this over low heat until the sauce has thickened. It will also become much deeper in color. For me, this process took about 45 minutes on low heat to reach relish-like texture. While the sauce is cooling down, let's make the corn oysters. You need fresh corn for this with the husk and the silk removed. I also did a trial of these with frozen corn and that did not go well. Details of that are on my blog if you're interested to read about it. To make the batter, we'll grate the corn with the larger holes of a box grater. And this is the exact moment when I realized I need a plate under the corn. So cut to the end of the grating process, you'll end up with some pulp and juices. Save everything and squeeze out all the juices that you can by running a paring knife on the cob. Then the corn pulp goes into a bowl along with one fourth cup of cornstarch, AP flour, 1 8 teaspoon of baking powder, salt and pepper, and two whole eggs. And it's time to mix. Of course I can whisk everything but mixing it with my hands gives me a better idea of the batter. I need it to be flowing and pouring consistency with no lumps at all. I kept the oil to heat up right when I was mixing the batter and looks about ready right now. You want the oil to be around 350 degrees Fahrenheit and then as carefully as you can start dropping the batter by the spoonful into the hot oil. In a previous trial, I heated the oil to about 375 degrees Fahrenheit and it was way too hot. That's why the interior was not fully cooked. So try to keep the oil between 350 to 360 Fahrenheit for the frying process. Flip to ensure that it's nice and brown on both sides and when you have a beautiful beautiful golden color, these are ready to strain. 
Right about now, my sauce has also cooled down, so I'm going to store it in a glass jar and in the fridge. To plate the corn oysters, or summer oysters if you may, a generous serving of the chili sauce right next to the fritters. Otherwise, what's the point of all this? And if you enjoyed watching this episode, also check out episode 1 where I share a historic recipe for a delicious cucumber bisque, perfect for a winter evening. Don't forget to subscribe, it really helps out the channel and we have tons of food content in the pipeline. So if you're subscribed, you'll hear about them first. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have a lovely day.